very special place and uh, Suzanne will be his final resting place. Mm. It's, it is a very special place and very new for us. It was opened in 2017. Uh, Suzanne's had several resting places. This is her fourth, and please God, her last. <laughs> this part, which we call the crypt, uh, and Suzanne's resting place was added on to our chapel, which was opened in the, in the 1990s, and specially built um, as a crypt with uh, special people, tapuna around on the wall there, um, there's lots of symbolisms. You need to be in it to experience it. But so beneath this Waitaha stone is a big concrete box and her um, casket is inside a new casket and it rests in the bottom of that space. And this stone is on top of that, that slab. Um, and it is very special. The, the glasswork and the lights in this space capture different aspects at many times. Um, the reflections at different times of the day fall across the stone. And it's just, it's like it's um, living. And it's like the essence of spirit and wiral circulating around the place. And there is a... a her spirit is here, but it is interconnected with God's creation, the spirit of the gospel, the spirit of the various people that supported her, like uh, Piata from, from Napui, who was her uh, mentor in all things Māori, uh, helped her with the Roma, the medicines. There's um, St. John Mary Vianney, her spiritual mentor, and two very special sisters who are close to her, Mother Cecilia Crombie, who uh, took over the reins when Suzanne died, and Sister Angela Muller, who was her faithful secretary. Then you've got the Matariki window, um, which has various re reflections during the, the day, and then the another window underneath it that are the colours of the Wanganui River and the river depicted there. And then over here you've got the what we call the 15th station, the uh, Resurrection Station, which is um, being designed from an original watercolour of John Drawbridge, a New Zealand artist who did the glasswork in the main chapel of the stations, um, of the wonderful windows of glory and praise. So it, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful spiritual place that's been created. The ceiling captures the Southern Cross to say, yep, we're in, the, in this part of the world. And it's built like the bottom of a boat or a walker, which um, has many symbolisms of Suzanne travelling in a whaling boat to uh, New Zealand, but also her many journeys in a waka up the Wanganui River and um, in the Hokianga and all around there. And then this lovely big window here, which looks out into a garden, but the piata that she, Suzanne ordered from um, Italy and it arrived in New Zealand in 1924. Uh, so she was alive to see it before her own death. But again, the garden, the uh, statue capture the reflections of these wonderful windows at various times of the day. It's an extraordinary place. And people now come, uh, can have time praying here for as long as they like. They're not out of the elements on a grassy bank. Um, they can be here, they write petitions. The, the actual stone on top from the South Island, it's smooth here, but it's also left rough, so people can be with it, um, engage with it, 
and it's got the contours of life. Yeah. Mm. And and wear and tear. Mm. Mm. Um, I was wondering, as we're in such a special place, you might like to end us with a prayer. Yeah, Suzanne was a woman of gratitude, and she um, was always talking about gratitude, thanksgiving. And the prayer she taught her sisters, which we now share with everybody, is, Thanks be to God for all he has done and all he is doing for us. That's the prayer. Thanks be to God for all he has done and is doing for us. So it's thanksgiving for the past and the now and, and the future. Yeah. So, thank you. Oh, so thank you, Teresa. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah, I'm totally distracted. There's the Matariki there. And there it is up there. <laughs>